There may be nothing more fun to add to your games collection than controllers from arcade fight sticks to Hadouken your enemies to the plug and play your grandma bought you because she thought you'd have more fun with 60 games in one but you didn't have the heart to tell her that all the games were bad. Unique control designs can change your play experience in many ways. Even the dark times where mad cats reign supreme and us younger siblings got stuck with that cheap clunky knockoff stuff. To help immerse yourself further into the world of survival horror, Capcom have signed off over the years on a few custom controllers made to change the gameplay experience. My name is Cy for First Aid Spray, and for better or worse, here are the unique controllers of Resident Evil. But before that, make sure whichever family member bought you that plug and play knows you appreciate the gift. It's the thought that counts after all. Resident Evil Survivor 2 Code Veronica Arcade Cabinet Imagine, if you will, it's the year 2001 and the last arcade in your city is still hanging on for dear life. As you peruse the aisles with a fiver worth of 50p coins in your pocket, jingling like the big shot you are, you see the usual staples. Ski ball, air hockey, outrun. Man, I love outrun. Suddenly, out of the corner of your eye, you see it. A Resident Evil arcade game? If this ever happened to you, chances are you were living in or vacationing in Japan. Rarely seen outside of its country of origin, this unique shooter wasn't your typical on-rails affair like Umbrella Chronicles. As part of the Survivor sub-series, players had full control of their player's body and thus the controller needed to accommodate for that. What looks like a standard arcade gun hides the fact that it also doubles as a joystick with tank-like controls. Whilst the home version of the game might be drizzling gulp worm doo doo and Americans should never be jealous of us Brits for having it come to the PS2, it's possible that it fared better in the arcade since it was originally designed for such. I wonder how much they're going for these days. Let me just check that old eBay and uh... Ah, well. Don't forget that our Patreon starts at one dollar a month! Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw, Nintendo GameCube Alright, let's get this one out of the way early as you're all waiting for it. The most notorious and widely known Resident Evil optional controller, the infamous Chainsaw. Easily the most unique design here, if the most unwieldy, this little toy was a masterpiece all of its own. At least from a conceptual point of view. In terms of utility, well, on paper this seemed like a great accessory for the new generation of survival horror. They really should have tested the button layout. The inputs that aren't all awkwardly grouped together in one place are tucked away underneath the handles as if searching for the triggers was meant to be a new part of the horror. Newbie Tech who produced the controller said the chainsaw was designed to increase the gameplay, but really all they do is add an extra layer of challenge, so take that how you will. Still, it looked good on your shelf, and you all remember it, so that stands for something. Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles Magnum Gun Bundle, Nintendo Wii Back to arcade-style action and the previously mentioned Umbrella Chronicles, Capcom decided to celebrate Resi going fully on rails with a new peripheral. To be fair, the Wii Remote and Nunchuck controls were so unique they seemed to excite many publishers into coming up with all kinds of weird attachments. Something inviting about those plastic shapes, it seems. The Wii Zapper was perfectly adequate, but to further improve the immersion, our Capcom overlords made a Magnum and Knife attachment for the Wiimote and Nunchuck respectively. They look wild, a lot like the actual weapons as opposed to the white plastic mould that was the Wii Zapper. Unlike the Zapper though, they were apparently pretty awful. Awkward and kind of painful on your wrists to use. Still, for those who did manage to get their hands on this accessory, if you didn't immediately exclaim, I have this when you picked up the Magnum, you did it wrong. Send it to us for proper treatment. It's a weapon. It's really powerful, especially against living things. Better take it with you. But how about you, Barry? I have this. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take this then. Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw, PlayStation 2. Okay, so there might not be as many unique Resident Evil controllers as we first thought when we started working on this list, but still, that damn chainsaw controller is inescapable for good reason, because it wasn't just released on the GameCube, but also for the PS2 when Resident Evil 4 was ported across. The yellow Nintendo controller stylized on the Chainsaw Ganado was swapped out for the red of the Chainsaw Sisters for the PS2, which was at least nicer on the eye, even if it was no easier to use. Come to think of it, why would we use this? Leon never wields a chainsaw in the game, it's just some of his enemies that do, so why does it make sense that the player use a controller shaped like a chainsaw to shoot guns? Wait, does this mean we probably really should have gotten a chainsaw controller for Resident Evil 7? Huh. 
Makes you think. <laughs> Biohazard dedicated controller, Sony PlayStation. Also known as the Resident Evil Pad, which coincidentally is what Nikolai calls his home when he's out looking for action, this was a special controller made for the most classic of Resident Evil games. It released around the same time as RE2 and was compatible with the PS1 series of titles and the general gimmick was moving the buttons around so they better suited the needs of any survival horror enthusiast. The R1 button was front and centre so that you could hold it down to aim and then pull X, which was now the trigger on the back, to fire. It might seem a little weird and even superfluous, and you'd probably be right, but it's a testament to a time in gaming where companies would try anything, and this controller, designed by ASCII, was something Capcom were happy to sign off on if it meant a little more moolah. It can be a little complicated to get used to, but with one arm shaped like a gun handle and the other shaped like a knife handle, once you do get there, you'll be one step closer to feeling like a member of STARS. You want STARS? I'll give you STARS. And those are all the unique controllers that we could find. Do you have a personal favourite? Did you ever try Gun Survivor 2 in the arcades? Is it less gulp worm doo doo? Let us know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. I've been Cypher First Aid Spray, and have a good week.